Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing the Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. This one was sent in by El Alcon, and uh, it's a pretty good one. This is interesting, because he's against Ninja Hunt, who uh, tends to... I mean, everyone knows he just gets big stacks of damage-dealing stuff and then throws them at people. That's that's his whole thing. Just maximum damage, march them at the enemy. Um, so, you know, it can be tough to stop it. If it catches you, you die. It's the, that kind of thing. So you've got to be got to be quite uh, quite shifty. It's pretty cool to see. So here, he's playing Empire, and he's against the Dark Elves, which can be a tough matchup anyway, so uh, it's it's a bit of a nuisance. But here he's got Knights of Blazing Sun, really nice charging. Here, you know, really quick units uh, for cavalry, anyway, for heavy cavalry. They are the fastest, which is really nice. Good to have that. Also, he's got an Amber Wizard and Balthazar Gelt. Balthazar Gelt is mostly going to be a battery, but he does have some spells too, and the Amber Wizard is just there for the uh, transformation of Kadon to get those extra uh, manticores out that can do some good work to any sort of spellcaster or anything like that. That. Also, there's some pistoliers. And some more pistoliers. There's two pistoliers. Pistoliers can be very useful against the army that he's up against, which I I think he might have been expecting. He's got uh, three great swords, two flagons, one is the Tatter Souls. He's also got some more Knights of the Blazing Sun in the back, and some spearmen guarding the Hammer of the Witches for any potential vanguard nonsense. Hammer of the Witches will do a ton of damage, and the magic damage is actually very useful, but mostly you bring it just for the accuracy here. But the magic can help if it's something like uh, Crone Hellebron or something that has, uh, you know, has, has the physical resist that you want to ignore. So, very fun. Here you can see uh, Ninja Hun's army is just, it's just Sisters of Slaughter. It's six Sisters of Slaughter. Uh, the Sisters of Singing Doom for the Terror and Rampage. And also Hellebron, Death Hag and a Dark Sorceress. Everything is on foot. So, um, all small targets, so, you know, the heroes won't get gunned down. But of course there is Transformation of Kadon, so they can still get gooned a bit. So here, really nicely, get some good damage and Sister Slaughter. These Pistoliers are paying for themselves fantastically. And, uh, wow, the Death Hag actually managed to get hit there. And the Sister Slaughter um, obviously took some damage too. But yeah, they took some damage there. So here you can see Knights of Blade Sun are charging in. But actually, it's not the cleanest charge. Not the cleanest charge. They're getting a bit stuck and poisoned, which is a shame. These other Knights of Blade Sun could afford to charge in. But obviously, you've got to keep away from the Sister Seeing Doom. And here, there's going to be a Fate of Buna. So, Fate of Buna, great if there's no um, Law of Life anywhere, but looks like the Manticore is going to try and get her. So, uh, Sorceress of Death is going to get charged, and it is at least keeping these guys busy. And, of course, nothing else can afford to slow down. They all have to keep pushing, or else they're just going to get killed by Pistoliers. So, you can't afford to pull this stuff back and wait for your Goon Squad. So, that Feral Manticore has been super useful already. So, over here, you can see Knights of Blade and Sun charging into this very injured unit, Sisters of Slaughter. And now the next unit is getting shot at. So that's pretty good. Hammer of the Witches still firing away, but I mean, over here, that Feral Manticore got very, very, very hurt. Um, but it kept this stuff busy, and that stuff has taken some damage. So that Goon Squad is pretty injured. But uh, honestly, Great Swords will get just just torn apart by Sister Slaughter. It's pretty ridiculous. So over here, Sister Seeing Doom are actually going to get charged by the Knights of the Blazing Sun here. They will take a lot of damage from a cavalry charge. They can do some damage in return in a prolonged engagement, but they are so far behind you could actually afford to keep the Knights of the Blazing Sun fighting them if they did get Rampage. But they are going to pull out before they get Rampage, so the Sisters of Seeing Doom just took a ton of damage for no reason. And the front line has engaged, and you can see the front line of the Empire is being just blended into a paste. It's, uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Even with all of what had gone on all the extra support, um, you know, great swords being great armoured anti-infantry. Sister Slaughter still just cleaves them to pieces, it's crazy. But one unit is struggling here, the other unit is coming in. Murderous Prowess has proc, so they're going to be doing even better, which is very scary. But nice rear charge for the Knights of Blazing Sun, and there's nothing to block these knights. So over here, another charge for the Knights of Blazing Sun into the Sister Slaughter, and another Feral Manticore is continuing to pester these guys. The Death Hag and the Death Sorcerers are both super injured here. They are both very injured indeed, and these flagellants are actually doing well against uh, the last sister slaughter there. More Knights of the Blazing Sun charging in. Lovely. But now huge attack buffs from all of these units. Um, that Final Manticore is going to die in seconds. So over here, you can see the Great Swords are struggling. Knights of the Blazing Sun charging in, trying to do the sister slaughter, but the sister Sing Doom are getting in the rear, and they will probably rampage and get pretty badly hurt. The other Knights are charging in, the flagellants are keeping this stuff at bay, which is wonderful. More rear charges, and these units are starting to go. There's a very healthy unit of great swords still left, and all the spellcasters, but actually it's tipping into army losses already. Which is kind of insane. Wow. That was quick. So, uh, there you go. Close victory. Uh, which is shorthand for brilliant victory. But yeah, army losses so quickly. It's just so fast. Um, as soon as 
that death hag and the uh, sorcerers of death got into combat you know in that final engagement they just got shredded to pieces and with sister slaughter being so expensive that that value just went so fast and uh, still plenty of knights gelt and the amber wizard and the hammer of the witches all still going the balance power is going to shift so fast and great sword as well just so much stuff was still super healthy so although a lot of these units would have probably struggled before long um yeah the just couldn't keep keep his army going at that point so yeah pretty fantastic fight so guys if you enjoyed this wow this has only been five minutes huh well, that's um, that's insane. Tell you what, we'll do another one. We'll throw in a bonus one this episode. How about that? All right, guys, here's the second one from El Alcon. And uh, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's against Xyphos. And uh, Xyphos is very, very good. And Norska versus Wood Elves really... Uh, not Wood Elves, High Elves can basically go any way. So this will be really fun to see how they get the edge over their opponent. So here you can see two chariots, Wolfric the Wanderer and the Brave... Uh, sorry, the... Not the Brave Shaman? What am I talking about? Shaman Sorcerer of Death. So, Spirit Leech. And also, is that, uh, yes, Aspect of the Dread Knight. Don't often see that. But I think it's a really nice pick. Because the terrifying units are massive targets that tend to get bullied by archers and things. So, uh, why bother? You may as well just give, I don't know, Marauders the ability to terrify things. And then you've always got it when you need it. It's pretty great. Also, um, a couple of Javelins. Excuse me. Uh, the Javelins are going to be great here. They're really good anti-large. They can really help deal with a lot of cavalry, especially when you have a lot of fodder. There's also some Berserker, uh, Marauder Berserkers. They can do very well against Spearmen and the like. And uh, also a ton of Skin Wolves. There's four units. Four units of Skin Wolves, which I think is an incredibly bold move. Incredibly bold, because they don't have armor. So although they can do some really good damage ganging up on things like Dragon Princes, uh, they'll take a lot of damage in kind. If they take a charge from any heavy cavalry, they get shredded so quickly, because that's the thing. High Elves don't have a huge amount of armor piercing when it comes to their cavalry. So if you have armored anti large units, you tend to do very well. So this is a very bold pick. But he saved himself some money, and he has a lot of them. So that's pretty scary. And with the Javelin supporting, he's got plenty of Marauders and Spearmen that can support too. So he's got, he's got tools. Also here, uh, Norskin Ice Wolves, great for slowing things down, so if they're trying to retreat from the Skin Wolves, good luck. Also, way in the back, we have the Beasts of Tashnell. They are anti-large, but again, not a huge amount of armor piercing, but they can certainly help chase down things like Illyrian Reavers and stuff. They're very handy there. So, Xyphos, Spearman, 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 a couple of Phoenix Guard. Very handy, the Phoenix Guard. Very resilient. He's also got Sisters of Avalon, so he will have some fire damage in there, which will really, really just... Oh, the Skin Wolves are in trouble if they get shot out there. Also, more fire damage from the Fireborn. So, the anti-large... Don't need a lot of armor piercing, huge weapon strength, and fire damage. So the Fireborn are just the perfect counter to these Skin Wolves, which is why it's such a bold pick, because you're almost always going to see the Fireborn in this matchup, because you need that anti-large, you know? Also over here, there are some more Dragon Princes hidden in the woods, and his lord is Tyrion. Tyrion, I think, is great here. He can do so much work. He is a really good duelist, and uh, Sunfang will just... just well, I mean, you know, you pointed at Marauder Berserkers. They're going to die. They're all going to die. Sunfang is devastating. Also, a Noble. So, Noble, um, he's just on his horse. So, yep, he's got some more anti-large, which will help. He'll really be good for hunting down those chariots. So, let's see how it all goes. So, units starting to push up. Skin Wolves in the trees, along with the Norskin Ice Wolves. But this ambush could be very bad for him if he gets caught by this stuff. Spearmen are pushing up. And, of course, the Skin Wolves are going to be bad against Spearmen, too. Because they don't have the armor to withstand damage from Spearmen. So, uh, yeah, real bold pick. Real bold pick. It's not something I would have thought to do. So, here you can see Wolfric is taking some damage from the Sisters of Avalon. And you can see the Fireborn are poised to defend from any Vanguard shenanigans. But units are pushing up. These Phoenix Guard are going to have to just run in and fight these Spearmen. Uh, these Spearmen are keeping the Marauders at bay, but now the Berserkers are getting close. And these Berserkers will absolutely shred any of the cheaper units. So over here you can see the Fireborn charged in. He's actually pulling his Spearmen away. But the Skin Wolves are getting on top of the Fireborn now. More Skin Wolves are coming in. So the Fireborn will get pretty badly surrounded. And the Chariots, they're just running through everything, trying to avoid Tyrion and getting some extra damage into the infantry to help his own infantry charge in. Beast of Tashnar, yeah, whatever, anti-large, but who cares? They can get onto these Sisters of Avalon. Sunfang doing a huge amount of work, but that is a regrowth trying to combat a Spirit Leech and a lot of damage from the Skin Wolves. But the Skin Wolves have taken an absolute beating, but they're busy at least. Way over here, you can see that a lot of units are trying to get on these Dragon Princes. The Dragon Princes did catch out the Norskin Ice Wolves, but there are Javelins nearby that can turn around and put in some good work. These Skin Wolves, injured from just fighting Spearmen, but they're going to pull out and try and get up those Dragon Princes too. So those Skin Wolves are going, and now Javelins are being thrown at the Fireborn, which will do some considerable damage. 
So, more harassment in the back line. Sis of Avalon have taken a lot of damage. And now the chariots are charging to the back of the Phoenix Guard, trying to help break them. Over on this side, these Phoenix Guard are actually struggling a bit against just the weight of uh, infantry that they're facing. So, javelins, still throwing javelins. These ones, trying to deal with that life mage by the looks of it, which is an interesting pick, especially when there's dragon princes here that you really need to kill. But these skin wolves are doing okay. Those Norskan ice wolves lasted for a long time, and those dragon princes are taking quite a lot of damage, knowing that they can't pull out a cycle charge with the ice wolves and just the speed of the skin wolves. It's dangerous. So, Wolfric and the Shaven Sorcerer are moving in to try and help break these dragon princes so these skin wolves could deal with the lords and heroes that are very, very scary. Here, skin walls pulling back in, marauders pulling back in, the javelins trying to get out of the way, these spearmen have had to pull out of this fight to try and block the other spearmen in. And way over here, you can see the Fireborn are kind of loitering, they're going to need to be brought back in. So over here, was that a uh, Earthblood, I believe? Yes, it was, but a Spirit Leech on top of the Dragon Princes as well. They've already broken, they're going to be taking damage from all these sources, and that's very bad for them. That is very bad for them indeed. And I think the Ice, yeah, the ice Wolves are back, so they could actually charge them off, but it looks like the uh, Shaman Sorcerer is going to be doing that instead. So Tyrion and the Noble, they're doing pretty well here against these Skin Wolves. Wolfric is getting out of there, and the Javelins are now pulling in to try and help. Of course, the Javelins here... They really want to get rid of these Fireborn. These Fireborn are going to shred the Skin Wolves too quickly if they get the charge. Over on this side, Skin Wolves and Marauders have managed to sandwich the Sisters of Avalon. They're going to go down pretty quickly. These Javelins are actually trying to help kill these Spearmen, which is an interesting move. So over here, Wolfric using Foe Seeker to try and escape. And sadly, these uh, Javelins are getting caught. But he has managed to charge away from the heroes and into the Fireborn. So the Fireborn don't get a nice rear charge on them, which is definitely worthwhile. It's often worthwhile changing target. And now another Spirit Leech on the Fireborn, and they are suffering huge damage right now. But, sadly, that's kind of it for those Skin Walls, and that's bad. But, at least this is Avalon are gone. These Spearmen are running, and these Javelins can now come back over here and try and help deal with all the cavalry. Uh, way over here, yep, yep, Norse Guy Swords did chase away the other Dragon Princes. But, these Fiends Guard are still fighting, but, uh, I mean, 100 kills each. But, I mean, they haven't really killed anything all that useful yet. You know, that's, uh, that's kind of the problem. They're just bogged down by cheap stuff, and that's kind of what you can do as Norsker if you go wide. You know, so it's kind of cool. The Fiends Guard aren't going anywhere, though, so that's something that's good for the High Elves, but they're not really making a dent in anything too valuable. Here, the Fireborn... Almost no health, 12 models, running straight into javelins, still totally confident, being chased by a bunch of other units. Wolfric is coming in here to try and help. The Noble is now coming in, Tyrion and the Mage are stuck over here trying to finish off these Marauders, which I think is a shame, should have kept uh, maybe these Spearmen back and pulled the javelins away, because those javelins would be better throwing javelins than in combat. So um, that's a pity, that's a pity to lose them. But this Noble, Hunter of Champions, brings melee defense down to three, Although these two units are anti-infantry, it doesn't matter. They can do so much work to this guy, lowering his armor as well. I mean, they've got a ton of armor piercing, but still, that noble just got caught out and horribly bullied. So Wolfric's going to escort him off, and uh, the Fireborn are all gone now. But over here, you can see finally these Phoenix Guard managed to break through, but they're getting spirit leeched. And they rely quite a bit on physical resist to keep going, so hitting them with magic is a nice way to whittle them down very quickly. Sadly, though, this Life Mage is still going. So that is a bit of a problem. Skin Wolves have got into this fight to try and help deal with Tyrion. Another Earthblood. But yeah, this mage is being a real nuisance. He really is. But everything else is broken now. Everything else is broken. There's, I mean, there's some spearmen over there, but I don't think they're going to tip it, frankly. So now you can see more charges from Skill Wolves in the rear. But this is going to be a beautiful Sun Fang. He's got 74 kills right now. Let's see what he ends up with. So that's 74. 109. Not bad. Not bad. So Ice Wolves running in to slow things down. Skin Wolves charging back in and the Chariots are doing a wonderful job coming in and doing some damage to these Phoenix Guard, pulling out, going in again. And um, yeah, I don't think these Phoenix Guard are going to last too much longer. Leadership of 1. Ooh, it just hit minus 8. Minus 2. There we go. They're gone. But there is still Tyrion. Tyrion can sit and fight a lot of things for a long time. But the best way to deal with Tyrion is kill everything else first. And that's what he's done. Once you kill everything else, Usually the balance of power will just screw him over, because if you just decide to fight him, he's going to get the Star of Avalon, uh, not, it's not Star of Avalon, is it? The Heart of Avalon proc, and he's just going to get all his health back and carry on fighting, and that can be devastating. But if you deal with him last, he's going to break before that procs, so he misses out on all of that extra health. Although it looks like, uh, it looks like Xyphos hasn't even bothered to bring it, because that's such a classic thing to do, leave him till last. So he didn't even bother bringing that spell, he knows there's just no point. But Hunter of Champions on Tyrion now, he's going to be taking a tremendous amount of damage. And uh, the Mage, just stuck in this fight for ages, gets shattered, and it'll soon be army losses. Tyrion is taking far too much punishment. And there we go, Pyrrhic victory. So, um, yeah, double bill. 
How about that? You guys got a double bill. I like a double bill. So, uh, Al Alcon here just did brilliantly. Um, both of these, both of the armies that we've shown off today, I think were very good. Um, the, I mean, the first one, it just shows that there is a lot of strength in having a balanced build. You know, having a lot of different tools at your disposal is way more important than just going all in, I think, with uh, one tactic. Going all in can, can work out, but against a decent balanced build, I think you're going to struggle because there's always going to be something that can hard counter you. And if something can hard counter you and you've brought all the same thing, then you're going to get a lot of value out of a single unit, aren't you? Um, you're going to wipe out half the army with very little worry. So, um, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened with that. You know, Pissed Leaders did a great job. Knights of the Blazing Sun were able to harass all that stuff really well, and it made it incredibly difficult. And, uh, yeah, Transformation of Kadon for sniping our heroes. He had all the tools he needed to deal with anything he needed to deal with. So that was pretty great. In this one as well, I mean, Skin Wolves, such a weird pick to see so many of these. I mean, I've been seeing them a lot more lately. People are bringing them a lot more, but I think against High Elves, it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous indeed. Of course, when you have the numbers, you are a lot more safe. Because if you've got the numbers, other things can take the charge. You know, you can bring your skin walls back behind the enemy line. You can you can put them in positions where they aren't going to get charged. And that's where they can be useful. Like I said, if they get charged, they die. But in the hands of someone who really knows what they're doing, like El, uh, El Halcon, El Halcon seems to know what he's doing, um, yeah, the skin walls just aren't going to receive a charge. So they're going to be able to get the drop on people, and they will be able to get the value. But uh, it's risky. It's definitely risky. I don't recommend... Anyone starting out, go with Skin Wolves in this matchup, simply because, yeah, one charge from Fireborn and they will get wiped out in seconds. But if you're not going to let them get charged, you'll be fine. And that's what this proves. Also, great, great use of the chariots, just keeping out of harm's way, keeping away from Tyrion. I mean, Tyrion got a ton of kills there, but it was mostly cheap infantry, you know? He wasn't able to do a lot of damage to very expensive things, so that made it very difficult. You know, the Phoenix Guard, they killed a lot of chaff, but who really cares? It doesn't really matter. You know, what was vital is the Dragon Princes got wiped out pretty significantly. The Sisters of Avalon couldn't get a lot of damage in. And uh, then the Lords and Hero just got bullied. I mean, the Noble getting caught out like he did was pretty horrific. Um, he just got completely shut down so fast. Um, you can't really cater for that. You know, you think, oh, Noble, anti-large. He'll be great against the Chariots. Yeah, not against two and not with a giant debuff. Still got to be careful. So yeah, absolutely wonderful. Um, so yeah, that's that. Cool. Um, so if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.